Good evening. Welcome to St. Louis Parish today as we celebrate the Feast of St. Louis. Our opening hymn this evening is number 886, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. Please stand and join in singing as we wel welcome Bishop Tilka and Monsignor Cruz. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And with your spirit. It's a great joy to be here at the parish of St. Louis on the Feast of St. Louis, my namesake. Uh, so I appreciate the invitation to be with you today, celebrating your parish anniversary. Uh, and, and we recognize the wonderful saint that St. Louis is as he devoted his life to the Lord as he served his people. And we are called to devote our lives to the Lord and to be in service to one another. But there are many times we fail to do so. And so let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare our minds and hearts to enter into these saving mysteries so that we can experience again the mercy God shows us. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God.
Let us pray. O God, who brought St. Louis from the cares of earthly rule to the glory of a heavenly realm, grant, we pray, through his intercession, that by fulfilling our duties on earth, we may seek out your eternal kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, this is a fasting that I wish, releasing those bound unjustly, untying the thongs of the yoke, setting free the oppressed, breaking every yoke, sharing your bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless, clothing the naked when you see them, and not turning your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wounds shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation, and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted. Then light shall rise for you in darkness, and the glory shall become for you like midday. Then the Lord will guide you always and give you plenty even in the parched land. He will renew your strength, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring whose water never fails. The word of the Lord. We are God's people, 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. This morning, I was still on retreat. Our, the bishops of Region 7, which is Wisconsin, Illinois, and Indiana, uh, we have been on our, our annual retreat this, uh, this week. And so uh, Bishop Bartosik was uh, the bishop who was leading us in morning prayer. And he started by saying, today is the feast of St. Louis, King of Peoria. <laughs> No, it is not my feast day. It is my namesake's feast day. And I, I think as I uh, uh, share that little joke with you in that it, it did make me stop to think about the importance of saints in our lives. And the fact that we are so blessed to have this great cloud of witnesses who have gone before us and given us an example to live by. Something in their mark in their life is remarkable. And that something is, is that they gave themselves in their own unique way because of who they were, who they are, to the Lord, in service of the Lord. They fulfilled the commandment that we just heard proclaimed. You shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your heart. And the second is just like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And as we gather here at St. Louis on the Feast of St. Louis, we look to him, the 13th century King of France. And perhaps we ask the question, how is it that he is a model for us? You know, there's lots of different saints. One of the interesting things as we talk to a, a, a I was talking with the bishops. I said, you know how many St. Mary's there are in the Diocese of Peoria? <laughs> There's only one St. Louis. <laughs> and when you look at his life, you see someone who was given earthly rule as king of France. But he did, it, did his job in some ways with heavenly love. He devoted himself as a secular king to serve the king of glory, to proclaim his faith in Jesus, to live out that faith and offer his leadership in a way that said everything he wanted to do was indeed somehow consistent with his desire to serve the Lord. Was he perfect? By no means. But he did live a remarkable life, and he gave himself to his country and to the Lord. Last year, when I was named bishop here in the Diocese of Peoria, and as I came down, 
one of the gifts that I received from one of the priests was a statue of St. Louis. It's the statue of St. Louis that is in front of the art museum down in the city of St. Louis. That statue was put in place oh, over a hundred years ago. And it has this king of France riding on a horse. And he's got his arm lifted up and he's holding his sword. Now you would expect that he would be holding his sword with the blade of the sword into the air. Kind of like a, you know, a victory-like march almost. But he's not holding his sword in the air, he's holding his sword with the blade pointing to the ground. And when I looked at that statue and I think about it, it's almost as if that sword makes a cross because of the way he holds it. As an aside, I understand that the local university, the students like to try to steal the sword. <laughs> it's had to be repaired a number of times over the years. But I think of that image, especially as I gather with you here today, because he's not holding up the weapon of war. In a sense, he's holding up the weapon of salvation. What he's doing by turning the sword to the ground is saying that there is indeed a higher purpose, a greater realm that's not of this earth, not of this world, but it is the kingdom of heaven that has been won for us by Christ Jesus on the cross. Through his death and resurrection, we have new life. We share in the glory to come in God's eternal kingdom. It's almost like a juxtaposition because what should be seen as a weapon of violence now makes the sign of peace, where it is the sign of Jesus' love for us. As I think even more of that image, because I think the reason the church gives us saints holds up these models for us to say, look at their life, learn from their example. In particular, I think of that image of St. Louis riding the horse with his arm in the air, almost forgetting the fact that he's even holding that sword and thinking about the fact maybe he's pointing to heaven. Maybe he's pointing to what God has prepared for us all. And then when you encounter that, at least for me, it begs my own question, how is my life pointing to heaven? How is my life pointing to the Lord? And for the shortcomings, my sinfulness, I certainly have to ask God for mercy. I have to seek out the pardon that Jesus offers. But I also have to commit myself every day to think about what ways in this day that God has given to me, has given to you, can your life, can my life, point to the glory of heaven, point to Jesus? Because that is our calling. That is how we become saints, is by living out the example by those who have gone before us, how they, in some remarkable way, brought the presence of Jesus into the world, the message of the gospel. They honored God and they loved their neighbor. And so today, as we gather celebrating this feast of St. Louis, the patron saint of this parish, let us commit ourselves anew. Let us commit ourselves yet again to our daily task of holiness. And let us ask ourselves, how might our lives point to the life of our Savior Jesus? Because it is through his cross that the victory of heaven has been won.
Trusting in God's compassionate care for us, let us now turn to the Lord, bearing in mind not only our own needs, but the needs of our world. For the church throughout the world, may she draw all people to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Louis Silka, may God bless him abundantly as he serves our diocese. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish and our paternal feast day, may all of us be blessed with greater holiness and greater faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders may follow the example of St. Louis' prudence, justice, and love of the poor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our hearts will be filled with gratitude for the many blessings that our parish and our families have received from God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who are sick, especially our parishioners confined to home, to nursing homes, and to the hospital, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the priests who have served our parish, especially those who have died, may God bless them with his eternal love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May all of our deceased parishioners be raised up to the glory of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now let's pray to St. Michael for the freedom of the Catholic Church in America. St. Michael, Michael, the archangel, defend, defend us in battle. battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May, May God, God rebuke, rebuke him, him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Heavenly Father, it is in confidence that we stand before you as church. We know that the pouring of your spirit into our lives calls us to be examples of holiness. As you respond to all of our needs, renew that spirit within us that we may live our life always honoring you and serving our neighbor. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join with us in singing our offertory hymn, number 721, Blessed Are They.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we, who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity, may by the example of Blessed Louis be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and you offer us sure signs of your love. And that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage, and their fervent prayers sustain us in all that we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. 
giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Louis and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all of the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Kingdom, power, glory, and glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be. Please join now in singing our communion hymn, number 931, One Bread, One Body. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. We 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we who are renewed by these sacred mysteries may follow the example of Blessed Louis, who honored you with tireless devotion and by surpassing charity was of service to your people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Can you be seated just for a brief moment? I am so happy and pleased to see so many who have come out for this special celebration. Thank you for making the time and the effort to come and, and, and offer our prayers to our patron saint and to welcome our bishop. And I can't help but think that all the others who chose to go to the fair, they got drenched. <laughs> but really, I, I shared with you in a recent bulletin of what a truly special event it is to be at a mass celebrated by a bishop. He brings truly a unique power and special gift and grace for us. But I've got to tell you, Bishop, I'm a little afraid because you have fire, lightning, and thunder when you have the consecration. <laughs> this is one for the books, but I'm truly grateful for you taking time to be with us. Thank you, you know. I know that you worked with Father Hepner some time ago to make arrangements for now. When I heard about this big event, I was like, oh my gosh, it's going to be so much to plan. This has been like the easiest thing for me. I'm grateful for all of the different volunteers. We had our sacristans, our lector, our deacon. We had the ladies in the office, beautiful choir, all of the wonderful servers. And thank you so much to all of those who helped make this a great event. And Bishop, I invite you and everyone else right after mass, please, Make your way over to Heart Greater Hall. It has been beautifully decorated. We have a spectacular meal that our CCW has planned, provided for, and are going to serve. And I'm sorry, I know I've only been here two months, but I finally get to try ye old tavern chicken or tavern chicken just down the block. Yeah, I hear it's spectacular. I can't wait to have some good bar food chicken. It's gonna be great. So please, uh, come on over to dinner, even if you didn't make plans, stick around. You don't want to walk home in the rain right now. Come over to dinner. Bishop, thank you. Thank you, Monsignor. You know, as uh, we were praying the Eucharistic prayer, just as uh, we concluded with the uh, chalice becoming the precious blood, the thunder rolled, and I thought, good timing, God. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. And our closing hymn, number 792, Go Make of All Disciples.